the horizontal friction problem set to do after your force friction lesson. Uh, first question, how much force required to remove a 20 kilogram wood crate on a wood floor? So we're going to look at wood on wood. And it says first move, so we're going to go for static friction here. So in order to do this, we have to figure out the weight. We have to figure out a few other things. We figure out the weight. So the weight is going to end up being the mass times the gravity, which ends up being 200 newtons, and the normal force is going to be equal to that because it's just a horizontal surface. Then um, now we're going to use the coefficient of friction once again of the wood block first moving. So there's a 25, and we get when we solve for this a force friction of 50 newtons. This question, how much force is required to keep a 20 kilogram wood crate moving at a constant velocity. So the key to this one is we're going to go for kinetic friction because it's going to be moving at a constant velocity. So the force applied would be equal to the, um, the force of kinetic friction. So same thing. We already found the mass from before, 200 newtons. But now we're going to go ahead and use a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.20. Same normal force, and we get a, a final answer of 40 newtons for our force of friction. Okay, for 3 through 7, we're using this information. 200 newtons of force is applied horizontally to a wood 65 kilogram box that is not moving on a brick floor. So does the box have static or kinetic friction? It's not moving, so it's going to be static friction. How much frictional force does it have? If it's not moving, the entire amount of, of force applied that's not moving it, and once again, it doesn't say at an angle or anything, so we're assuming horizontal, is going to be that static friction force. What's the normal force on the 65 kilogram box? Well, we're going to go ahead and figure out our weight, uh, 65 times 10, and that is going to be our normal force on this box. Now, how much force is required to get the box moving? Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our normal force, um, 65 times 10 or 650 newtons. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say, okay, so not moving. How much force? Okay, so required to get the box first moving. So we're going to go with static friction on wood on brick. So once again, it says wood and brick here. So it's going to be important just to get the cues from the, the problem. And then we're just going to solve for the force of friction. And so when we solve for this with the coefficient of friction, this is going to be the maximum force required to first get the block moving. So slightly more than 390, point, 390 newtons would be required. Okay, how much applied force is required to keep the box moving at a constant velocity? So we're still doing wood on brick. We got wood, we got brick here, but we're keeping it moving at a constant velocity, so we're going to have to use our kinetic friction, uh, coefficient of kinetic friction. So we'll still have the same box, which is six, has a weight of 650 newtons and a normal force of that. Uh, we have a coefficient of friction of 45 that we pulled from this table, once again based on the scenario. And then when we solve for force of friction, we get 292.5 newtons. Okay, for 8 and 9, we're using this information, a 7.5 kilogram box of unknown material, so we're not going to go to the table, is resting on a concrete full floor that requires 63 newtons of force to first start the box moving and 45 newtons of force to keep, the, keep it moving at a constant velocity. So I'm giving you enough information to do multiple things with this. What's the coefficient of static friction? Okay, static friction, we need to go ahead and see the first start the box moving. So and once again, static friction is going to be more than the kinetic any time. So we're going to go ahead and solve for the weight so we know the normal force. We got a mass of 77.5 kilograms. We got a, a G of 10. We go ahead and solve for the weight, which is also equal to our normal force, magnitude of normal force, which is 75 newtons. Now we're going to go ahead and that is our weight. We are going to use the 63 newtons of force as our force of friction because that's what's required to get the, 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 the box actually moving in the first time around. And then we're going to use our weight or our normal force. Once again, we're just filling in that. That's going to be our normal force of 75. And we get a, a coefficient of, of static friction of 0 0.84. Okay, in this problem, what's the coefficient of friction of the unknown material and the coefficient of kinetic friction? So now we're looking at this value over here because it's already moving. Um, we get, we're going to have the same information to get the normal force. We're going to go ahead and go to the same equation, except we're going to use the force required to keep it moving and then the normal force. And we get a coefficient of friction of 0.6 here. Next problem, we have a 250 Newton rubber block on a concrete surface that is... Uh, is moving at three with 300 newtons of force that's applied horizontally. 
the coefficient of friction is 0.8. So they're just giving you the coefficient of friction and it's moving. What's the net force on the rubber block? So this is going to require a little bit of work. We have our, they gave us weight. Anytime they give you newtons and they put it in front of a in, in, uh, item, that's just telling you the weight. If they gave you mass, it would have been telling, or kilograms, it would have been telling you the mass. So we're going to go ahead and just use that as our, our normal force. And then we have to figure out, okay, so what is the frictional force going to be? And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and just plug in our 0 0.8 um, from our problem from our coefficient of friction we're going to plug it in our normal force and we're going to get a force of friction of 200 newtons so this is going to be the overall scenario once you get that we're applying a force of 300 newtons and there's a force backwards of 200 newtons and so 300 to the right minus the 200 we get 100 newtons forward once again we don't know the direction so we'll just go with forward so that's the net force for number 10 what's the acceleration of the rubber block well we only know the we don't we know the net force and we know the weight we need to get the mass so we can do the f net equals ma equation so we're going to go ahead and use the weight of 250 they gave us we're going to use the g of 10 newtons per second squared and we're going to solve for the mass rearranging the weight equation and that's what it becomes mass equals weight divided by gravity and so when we plug in our values we get a mass of 25 kilograms now this is the mass we can use with this net force and that's going to help us do the equation right here. And once again, we're solving for acceleration, so we rearrange it, divide out the m, and then we plug in our numbers, and we get a acceleration of four meters per second squared. What would the final velocity of the rubber block be if this 250 newton force were applied from rest for 1.5 seconds? So, just a carry-on equation using the acceleration that we had from we solved for before. We have acceleration; it's asking you for final velocity. It's telling you it started at rest, and it's also telling you 1.5 seconds. So, we're going to go to our old faithful 1D motion equations, and we're going to pick the best one that has all four of those variables, including our unknown, and that's going to be that first one right here. So we're going to take that first equation, Vf equals Vi plus At. We're going to plug in our values. And we, when we finish this off, we are going to get a final velocity of 6 meters per second squared. So this problem is kind of starting you over, except we're going to use the same acceleration. We're going to use acceleration of 4.0 meters per second squared that we solved for using this information to start off the question. It still asks you for the final velocity, but in this, this, and it still starts from rest, but this time they tell you it's applied over 10 meters, so we're not going to go with the 1.5 seconds anymore. This is a new question. So we look at our old faithful 1D motion equations, and we pick the one that has all four of those variables, A, V, F, V, I, and X, and this is the only one that has it. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our values. Well, I rearrange it first to get this, to get rid of the square root, take the square root of both of these to get this right down here, and now we can plug in our values. And when we do the math, to keep everything under the square root, you get 8.94 meters per second. Okay, so lastly, we're going to go ahead and take a look at, now we're going to have a force at a 170 newton force at a 30 degree angle. Um, they're telling you the, bo the box is 10 kilograms, um, and then there's going to be a applied force that's going to relieve some of the normal force, and it's going to not be the entire amount that's going to be the applied force forward that's actually going to go into motion, only this part's going to go into motion. So what's normal force on the box? Well, we have to first of all start off with figuring out the weight. So we have a 10 kilogram box, mass of 10 kilograms. We got an acceleration of gravity of 10. We have a weight of 100 newtons. So that would be the normal force without this upward pull that we're doing going on here. So we have to figure out what that upward pull is going to be. And so we're going to take a look at this. And we, if we can solve for the opposite side knowing our hypotenuse, so sine of the angle times the 170, which is what we do here, we're going to know how much less than the weight the normal force is going to be. And so this is actually going to be 85 newtons up, so it's going to relieve a lot of that 100 newtons of, of, normal, of weight. And so the ground only has to push up by that 100 minus 85 or 15 newtons. So that's going to be the normal force that goes into friction. So it's going to, it's going to re release a lot of friction if you were just pulling this box horizontally. What's the frictional force of the box? Well, we're going to go ahead and take that same normal force from before that we just solved for. We're going to take our coefficient of friction, and we're going to plug it into the equation. When we plug it into the equation, we get a frictional force of 3.75 newtons. So there's going to be a force we're going to apply this way, and then there's going to be that 3.75 newtons backwards. What's the horizontal applied force of the box? So now we're going to go ahead and solve for this side. Um, we're going to solve right here for this side. When we solve for that, we'll know how much of the 700, 170 newtons is actually going into the motion or the possible acceleration. And so we have that side is 
it's cosine adjacent is cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse, cosine of 30 times 170, and we get 147.2 newtons forward. So we now can come up with the net force of the box. We have the 147.2 newtons forward. We got the 3.75 newtons backwards as, of our, as our frictional force. We can kind of draw a quick diagram of the force diagram of it. And we can see that we're going to take the 147.2 and subtract the 3.75 from it. And we get 143.47 newtons forward. So this net force is what's going to accelerate this 10 kilogram box. And we're ready to finally solve for that acceleration. So we're going to take that 143.47 newtons forward. We're going to take that 10 kilograms. We're going to solve for A, doing the A equals F net equals MA, which becomes A equals F net over M. We plug in our, our values, and we get 14.35 meters per second as our answer here.